You're watching CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hello, everyone. I'm Ross Palumbo, and here's a look at your top stories at this hour. One of the most controversial American figures, O.J. Simpson, has died at the age of 76 after a battle with prostate cancer. The former NFL star's athletic achievements brought him fame and fortune, but he was forever tainted by his trial and acquittal in 1995 for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. He later lost a multi-million dollar wrongful death suit brought by the victim's families. In 2007, police arrested him in Las Vegas on several felony charges, including kidnapping and armed robbery. He then went to jail and was released nine years later. He died surrounded by his children and grandchildren. The O.J. Simpson trial had a major impact on L.A.'s legal system and on many high profile cases. KCAL's Jasmine Veals in downtown LA where it was once ground zero. I'm Jasmine Veal. I am here in downtown LA because this right here is where the trial of the century took place. There on the ninth floor. It has now been nearly 30 years since OJ Simpson was acquitted right here in this very courthouse. It was a circus outside here for nine months as the drama unfolded inside of the courtroom of uh, the country. They were able to watch this trial live. Uh, we had high risers that were built out here for the TV reporters so that it could be broadcast to the world. Uh, people arriving here at the courthouse, we're talking about the defense teams, the prosecution. Uh, it was treated like it was a red carpet as they were hollered out with questions and how are you? Uh, the defense and the prosecution began that trial on January 24th, 1995. It was lengthy. The jury needed, though, just four hours, four hours of deliberation to come to that verdict on October 3rd, 1995. Simpson found not guilty by the jury on both counts of murder. I've been talking to some local attorneys. I've been talking to the experts about how this country was so mesmerized as they watched as Simpson tried on the gloves that did not fit, how his persuasive attorney Johnny Cochran Jr. and Barry Sheck laid out their case and they tore into the prosecution's witnesses and the evidence. It brought people right here inside this very courthouse to watch it all unfold and to have really this personal stake in what happened and the emotional debates on the issues of race, domestic abuse, celebrity justice, and police misconduct. One of the big takeaways uh, as a young lawyer and even bringing it into later on in the years is that sometimes. Trials aren't always decided on the heart of the evidence, right? In this case, in the OJ case, it was the Furman tapes that were the decisive factor for a lot of the jurors. When racism came up and we saw that LAPD detectives uh, were harboring resentment towards a particular race, that really turned the trial and that brought scrutiny onto them. And had that not been there, who knows if the verdict would have been the same. So we are taking a look back about and how uh, this trial really changed the landscape about uh, how local attorneys say things have changed for them since the O.J. Simpson trial right here. And again, the impact this has had on court proceedings moving forward. That's all coming up on KCAL News tonight. All right. Thanks a lot, Jasmine. We'll see you tonight at four and stay with CBS News Los Angeles for continuing coverage of the death of O.J. Simpson. Sixteen million dollars. That's how much money federal prosecutors now say Shohei Atani's former translator stole from him for illegal sports betting. Now he faces criminal charges. KCAL's Luz Delia Caballero has a closer look. I'm Luz Delia Caballero, and we have recently learned that Shohei Otani's ex-interpreter, Ibe Mizuhara, has been accused of stealing $16 million from the MLB star. Federal officials said in a press conference earlier that Ibe Mizuhara, who had an insatiable appetite for illegal sports gambling, actually accessed Otani's bank account online and shut out Otani's agent, accountant, and financial advisor from the account. And through this thorough investigation. Uh, Otani's interpreter was federally charged with bank fraud, accused of stealing again more than $16 million from the baseball superstar. So, just to give you all a little bit of background, the ex interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara, actually met Otani, who didn't know English uh, in 2013, and helped him set up a bank account shortly after he arrived in the U.S., which was in uh, 2018.
2018 and has since acted as that de facto manager. A U.S. attorney for the Central District of California, Martin Estrada, uh, let us know during the news conference that this was when their relationship really started, when he began to be his interpreter, uh, going on to say that Otani in this case is considered to be a victim and that Mizuhara really used the trust that they had formed given that he was Otani's interpreter to actually go ahead and steal all of this money. Coming up on KCAL News at 5, we'll share more on what we know about this charge and what led up to uh, actually filing this today. And of course, more on what we know about this investigation. All right, thanks a lot. Luz Dele, we'll see you in just a little bit. Tomorrow, Mizuhara is expected to turn himself in and make his first court appearance in downtown LA. That appearance is expected to be brief, and he is not expected to enter a plea. Turning now to your weather with a live look outside. It is looking a little, little hazy out there. You can see perhaps a little bit of the fog is moving in. It's a live look from our Malibu camera. So when can we expect the rain to come? Meteorologist Paul Diano has the answer in our next weather forecast. Here are your next weather headlines for Thursday afternoon. Thursday evening fog continues. Low cloud cover continues right at the coastline, uh, whereas most of us have had morning and afternoon sunshine. A light onshore breeze today uh, kept temperatures down and kept you pretty cloudy right along the immediate coast. Tomorrow morning, everybody's cloudy, but today we're still warm inland. And as much as we all want it to change, uh, the forecast has not changed. It's still going to be soggy this upcoming weekend. Rain is likely west facing beaches. Clouds hanging on like half a mile inland. That's it. The rest of us are sunny. Orange County, some clouds right along the coastline as well. Not even as far inland as the 405, uh, but they are there at the beach. Our ridge is moving out. A storm from the Gulf of Alaska is moving in. This time of year, they typically go through the Pacific Northwest. We never even hear about them. But with the ridge leaving, there's nothing blocking it. It's going to dive all the way down and give us a rain chance uh, coming up on Saturday and perhaps also Sunday. So today, the warmest day of like the next 10 days at a minimum. Chino Riverside 89, Claremont 83, San Bernardino 87, Los Angeles 79, Simi Valley 81, cooler at the beach, upper 60s there. Extended forecast calls for two wet days. They are Saturday and Sunday. Early next week, we're not going to be as warm, but the sunshine comes back. Today's high 79 for our valleys as warm as 87 degrees today. Stronger ocean breeze will shape 13 degrees off of that high tomorrow. But the bigger change is that rain chance and much cooler weather moving in this weekend. That's your forecast. All right, thanks a lot, Paul. That's been the rundown for us at this hour. Thanks for joining us. We will be back live at four right here on CBS News, Los Angeles.